What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. Uh, like, subscribe, please. Leave a comment down below for the Algo Rhythm. Spread the word. Let people know what we're doing here. I really appreciate the fans. Genuinely, you've been along for this ride for years now, and I hope to keep this train a moving. So thank you for coming with me. Um, I'm, of course, not on tour right now. I'm hoping to shoot a special soon. Who knows? Uh, tell me where you want it to end up on Netflix, on YouTube, on Amazon, on Apple TV. Uh, maybe Quibi might pick it up. Uh, the Roku, do they have one? Who knows? Who cares? My guest this week is Andy Richter. So funny, Andy Richter. Uh, this dude is a genius. He's got his own podcast uh, that you need to check out as well. Check him out on this podcast. If you like it, go watch his podcast. That's the beauty of how this works. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here... We pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger, I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It is the effervescent. Um, the ethereal, mm. uh, the enigmatic, mm. I've, I've used that one before, mm. uh, the um, enhanced. Do you always have to do, yeah, enhanced. Enhanced. Uh, the um, Medication ones. Uh, egregious, sure. egregious at times. <laughs> egregious, yeah. Uh, Andy yeah, Richter, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Andy, thank uh, you for coming. Extravagant. Extravagant. Oh, you keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you keep going. Uh, um, mm, Extracurricular. Your praise is effusive. Uh, effusive. Um, electable. Electric. Uh-huh, electric. Um, you, say, you think you're electable? Oh, absolutely. For what? Um, I was prom king. Were you really? Of Yorkville High School. I mean, it's, you know, it's a Look small. At you. It's a It's a small pond. Uh, but, but who cares? I was, I was the prom fish. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You were prom king? I was prom king. And named prom queen. What was her name? Uh, Michelle Engelhart. And we know her very well. Of course, she's the host of. <laughs> she's the host of uh, Where Am I Now? Where Am I Now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm going to pour I, you some Blantons because. Uh, I bet you Michelle Engelhart is probably somewhere no, in the Midwest there, having a f- lovely full life with the family and so forth. Do you think she's doing better than you, though? Hmm. Andy. Not right now, maybe. No chance. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Um, Cheers to you, everyone. We're having a little bit of Blanton's. We're sipping on some, uh, some good old-fashioned Blanton's. And Andy said, I like Blanton's because you like the fishnet stockings that are on there. I, well, yeah. I mean, you can take those off. No, I never do. All right. It's sexier that way. Don't you think it's like a real... I know, but it's, you know, it's, it's just packing material. All right, man. Can you just let me have my okay. little fanciness? All right. All right. It's Whatever. Cute. Are you a bourbon guy or no? I am. I am. I, I like bourbon, um, and I like Irish whiskey okay. I like rye. Scotch, no thanks. No thanks. Like a burnt fucking Band-Aid. Yeah, it's I don't terrible. like it. It's Why just, do people like it so much? I don't know. Do you think people actually like it, or do you think they like the idea of it? Because it's this noble kind of uh, very, like, intelligent men drink it in quiet rooms. Yeah, I think there's part of that, but I mean, but I, I just think that I guess people like it. I mean, it, it wouldn't exist without people liking it. Yeah. And people, I just can't believe that you, if you have the reaction to it that I do, which is like, yuck. Yuck. Um, I don't, I can't believe, I can't figure someone would fight through that. Yeah, but. but You know what I mean? Well, but remember when you were young and you, what was your first, when did you have your first drink? How old were you? Of beer or booze or whatever. Well, I mean, besides sips. Like when you, when you got drunk for the first time. Oh, I was probably. 15 and the taste was what do you it remember it was probably beer yeah it was probably beer yeah and it was not it was not pleasant but, but that's something you grew into it. it yeah yeah so scotch to me feels like i think if you get really good scotch you know like i just bought a friend a bottle of Macallan 15 mm-hmm. and i can drink it with him right. i just i think it maybe at the atmosphere is why people like it because it's a slow sipper yeah and this is kind of like irish trash where we'll just chug this stuff and just go ham right this is also bourbon is is uh, on the range of whiskeys very sweet. Oh yeah, because corn, baby. Yeah, we yeah. like that corn, yeah, man. Yeah. I, but I, I just there's something about Scotch that I've tried, and we were never Scotch people, and I come mm-hmm. from all bourbon drinkers. Oh really? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm an, I'm I'm an Irish scumbag, and yeah, all of the Irish on my family like mostly bourbon. Not a lot of rye people in my family, mm-hmm. but Scotch never made its way in. My dad tried it a few times. It did that thing where we would sit and have one, and I was like, oh, wait, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, can we not do this? No. Like, I, I have a bottle of, of Johnny Walker Blue that I got as a gift, and I got it as a gift from a f- 
a fa- as an industry person, you know, a show that was sold that never went from yeah. the producers as a, hey man, this is how it goes. Yeah, yeah. And it was like Here, one this, of my first times. Yeah, consolation prize. Yeah. yeah, and I still haven't opened it, partially because don't love scotch that much, even right. though it's amazing scotch. Also because it's a weird, it's got a, I, I feel like I That's have, a fancy one too, isn't it? The Johnny Walker Blue is is one of the best. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. probably 300 a bottle or something oh, like wow. that. But I also didn't open it because I'm like, this is, has sad remnants to me of a thing that never oh, happened. Right. It's almost like right. I leave it on the... And people come over and they're like, oh, what do you do with that? I'm like, it's... A, I look at it. It's it's And feel sad. <laughs> it's, a, it's a toothache I push on. It just reminds me yeah. of, of, of this business. It's actually kind of a... Um, it's a microcosm of the business where I know what's in there is good yeah and it, it but it's right it, it just it has was something denied to you it was denied yeah, yeah something was taken away i find though scotch is a wonderful thing to give to people mm. that doesn't cost you a dime when you you know like yeah. somebody gives you a fancy bottle of scotch and you give it to one of your friends and they're so like oh my god i love this thank you so much and you're like hey listen i you know look at me yeah yeah i basically gave you junk mail yeah you know it's you, like for what it means to me you can pass it on to somebody yeah, else if you, you don't need it right here's something i don't want you know <laughs> uh I want one honest answer out of you to start the okay. show. That's Am I lot. better looking than Conan? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, you're both handicapped by the whole... Sure, sure, sure. You know, ginger thing. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're light-colored uh, hair as well. I, I know. You're I know. not one of us. But, it's, but you're an actual mutation. Correct. You are a genetic mutation. Yeah. I'm just uh, a recessive gene. Yeah. You know? I mean, and that, you know, and I, when I was a kid, I was what they call a towhead, a real white a blondie. Blonde. You were yeah, a blondie super boy. Super blondie. Um, and yeah, that's just recessive genes. But I, so I'm repulsive, but you're just unlucky. Is that kind of what it is? <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's kind of how guess, it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Neither one of us are meant to survive, you know, the oncoming genetic war. And, and here we are living in the middle of a place that has sun 300 oh, days out of the year. Ridiculous. I, it, I just go, gets, I, I just, it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter, yeah. and I just get more grumpy. Same. Yeah. Why don't we move to a place that's colder? I don't because they don't have they don't have uh, fantastic assholes that give you bottles of scotch when they when they fuck you over. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. They just say gonna, sorry, yeah, Ted. You're the not going to get through. that in Vancouver. That's exactly well, you probably right. Will. No, you would in Vancouver. Yeah, in Vancouver you would. Winnipeg probably not. No chance. What yeah, about yeah. Al- anywhere in Alberta, like Edmonton or Calgary? Uh, yeah, no, no. What about in Saskatoon? They, well, first of all, they would never give you that nice of scotch. I don't think that's true. They yeah, give yeah. you some Canadian trash right, whiskey, right? Right. Which is what that's what when you're talking about what your parents drink. That's my parents would drink the. Uh, the Canadian Canadian whiskey. club. Yeah. The, well, the one that their drink was, uh, uh, VO dry Manhattan Ooh. on the rocks, Ooh. which is a VO blended whiskey, which yeah. isn't bad. It's, it's okay. Not, it's fine. It's great. It's, it's okay. It's a you mixer. Know, it's for mixing. It's something if you go to a VFW hall, you'll be safe ordering it, you know, <laughs> uh, right after you get Legionnaire's disease, yeah, yeah. you'll get a little bit of VO um, mixed. But, then it's instead of the sweet vermouth, it's dry vermouth. It's dry vermouth. That's and right. And they would put an olive in a twist. So it was kind of like whiskey with like pickle juice. And it's such a weird drink. Yeah. And, I'm not a fan. and, I, and I mean, you know, just they would, they'd get it wrong like 40% of the time. The, the, right. You know, they'd the, bring the, them the, the mixes? swing vermouth. No, they just bring them sweet vermouth because they'd oh. hear Manhattan. And they'd say no dry Manhattan, which I, I don't know where the fuck they got it from. Yeah, that is that is my a mom and my mix. stepdad. Um, but that was their drink, and that was you, you know. never like that kind of stuff. Uh, tr- no, I took it like that. I would take a sip of, and I'd just be like, "That is punishment." Yeah, that is not enjoyment. You know. And my grandmother loved uh, Manhattans. That was my her and my grandfather's drink, and they'd be you know. They would be left on the table at the family parties because there's a thousand of us. Right. My mom's one of ten. Yeah. And the family's one wow. of fifty. Wow, wow. And my grandmother's like four hundred square foot house, and we'd shove in during the holidays. Yeah. And, and was in a mix of Irish and Italian, or my dad is Sicilian, and that we don't that family doesn't come over. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. they're they're busy killing people, and <laughs> you know what I mean, running yeah. from the police. Vendettas against yeah, exactly. each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah, vendettas don't make for a big Christmas. No, yeah, yeah. no, but my mom's it's all Irish on my mom's side, mm. and and. Uh, genuinely it's like just every everyone's big drinkers but when we were kids right you'd get you know like yeah. a, a quarter finger left and yeah. you we would all combine them and then we'd hide in the laundry room and 
and drink it and someone yeah. would throw up and then they would snitch. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just kind of how it goes. Yeah. But but as you get older, then the parents at the holidays would just be like, just here, just sneak yeah, yeah. you on. Take a sip. Yeah. 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 yeah That's yeah. kind of how I fell in love with bourbons and whiskey in general is because of that, growing up around that. And beer for me was never, until I got to college, I don't even think I had oh. beer. Yeah, no, we had, it was, I grew up kind of in the country and, and, and my parents were very lenient and everybody had an older brother that could buy him beer. Right. And we'd get, and I mean, they would go to bars and get cases of long necks uh, <laughs> from the back of old, ta- like old yeah. taverns. And then we would have, uh, road parties, which is just drive out to the middle of nowhere and drink and, and park and drink. And I, you know, whoever would be, you just hear about it and you'd hear it's like, you know, take a ride on whatever road and just, you just look for taillights. Wow. And then, and it, cause it would be, you know, just like out in the middle of corn and bean fields. What town is this? Yorkville, Illinois. Yorkville. Yeah. Cause you but know, I'm, was, I'm, I'm a Chicago kid. Right. I know that. Are you, uh, are you affiliated with any of the, the team are you a sports fan of chicago at all or uh, no cubs still sorta you know but uh, the bears i don't get matt walsh is a real good friend of mine and he's yeah, really love Walsh-y. he's really big in uh to the bears and uh, in fact he and i just went to a dodger game and uh he told me that i can't remember what he was on he was what he, substance he was on no 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 like he was on some show and they interviewed him about something, and he said something about his love of the Bears. I can't remember what it was. But he got an email from uh, one of the McCaskies. Oh, really? Yeah. That owns the uh, team? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I bought, enjoyed you on Veep, and uh, if you're ever oh, in wow. town and you want to come to a game, like, what a hookup that That's is. That's incredible. The yeah, McCaskies, yeah, yeah. for people that don't know, are the, the, the mother is... 99? And she's like George Hallis's daughter. Because I want to find... Like yeah, that's, that. that's exactly right. But they, it's been one of the... I think them and uh, the Giants are the only continuously family-owned teams. Left, yeah. Yeah, so far. yeah. She's 99 years old. Wow. Virginia Hall- yeah, Hallis McCaskey. Yeah. And she's uh, she just turned 99 in January. Shout out, uh, Virgie. Virgie, yeah, yeah. Virgie Cask. 99 years old. Do you want to live that long? I don't think I do. I don't either. I don't think I do. Such I mean, an extensive the, amount of life. Yeah, and also it's just like, say I'm 55. That Like the amount of joint pain that I've got, gained in the last 10 years. Yeah. I, imagine Mm-mm. in 30 years what that's going to feel like. I know. I you feel know? like I've heard that phrase from like my dad and his friends that are like, if I reach the age where it hurts to like just even like move yeah. he's like just take me out back yeah, and, yeah. and shoot me i have i have uh i have the beginnings of arthritis in different joints but one especially because i had surgery on this thumb pretty sexy accident i uh was in a golf cart and was making a u-turn and went up on the curb uh. and when it came down off the curb the wheel snapped and i had my thumb over like the <sighs> spoke of the wheel mm. so it hyperextended my my thumb back and then it took about two weeks it what it did is it pulled a tendon pulled on, uh, you know, where it was attached on the bone and it detached the bone a little bit and it took about two weeks for it to finally come off. Oh my God. And then was flopping around in there and it was so weird to be like, this pinky would hurt and then like my whole hand would be numb and then it would be throbbing pain. But I have uh, uh, arthritis in there now. Yeah. Because that happened like 15 years ago. Uh, But I have arthritis in there now and there's just times when I'm like, ow, out of fucking nowhere. Fucking thumb, fucking throbbing pain. <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's infuriating. It's like, wait a minute. Now add 40 you know? years. I know, I it's know. It's going to get worse. I know. Just cut your hand off at I some guess, point. I or guess, Or cut the thumb off. No, it'll just, you know, I'll have those giant old man knuckles, you know, those big, like, you know, dark crystal knuckles. That's you know? cool, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like my father-in-law, he's got a, he has, his hand is a, is a baseball mitt. I mean, yep. it's this big, and he t- <laughs> and when he holds your hand... It's like saying, it's like him saying without saying, you're a little boy always Right, to right, me. right, right. I'm a man. Yeah. And you're a boy. I yeah. built stuff. Put your hand in a couch cushion. Yeah. <laughs> it feels, it's so daunting. And he's like the softest, sweetest guy. But I'm like, mm-hmm. this is, that's what guys are, I yeah. guess. I never. Yeah, yeah. I, these have done nothing. These yeah. have done nothing. These, are, these, I used to have calluses from actual work and they're big hands. Like. Yeah, you got nice hands. Uh, Colin Quinn. Every time I would see him, I haven't seen him in years, but every time I'd see him, all he would talk about is, like, he had hand envy. 
Because yeah. I think, because then he thought like, because he's in his mind, he's like, I could hit people really well with those. You sure can. Yeah. And yeah. I guess, I guess, okay, yeah, that makes sense. If you're going to be hitting people with your hands, the bigger the hands are, the better. And I do have big hands. Have you hit people with them? I have never hit anyone in anger. What? Uh, with a fist in my life. Let's get you mad today. <laughs> you knock me out on my All own right. show. Do you need to reset the camera? <laughs> no, no, leave them. Let them be. Let's let's see what happens. What you even when you were young, you did like even when you were a kid, kid like like, like ten or my, twelve with you got, my brother, sure. sort of. And then the last time was maybe like it was in grade school, and it was kind of one of those you know goofing around fighting that sort of gets serious cuz some you get mad you yeah. know and that was the closest i ever came i never wow. ever was i just i don't know no i no meat no meathead in college tried to fuck with you and then you just were not like not really and no. i always just kind of i i mean there were you know like there were older kids in high school that were kind of assholes to me right. but i am first of all i think i was probably like i was just terrified of getting in trouble generally Oh, you were a good kid. I was a good kid, yeah. and I and I don't even so you know. And looking back on it, I don't. I guess I thought I was going to get hurt or something, but it was like, how much could you really like you know? Well, getting hit in the head back hurts. You can hit somebody, and it's great. Yeah. As soon as they hit, I've been in a fights, and I was a kid. I was a troubled kid who fought a lot, but yeah. You start to learn as you get a little bit older. You're like, well, they hit back, and that's yeah. the worst part. Yeah, yeah, you hitting yeah. someone is like, yeah, I, I got him good. But the next day, after you've gotten socked a few times, yeah. no thanks. Yeah, I, I think also too, it's like, like we, did you grow up on the south side? No, I grew up no on the near north side. On the near north yeah. side, because all of my friend, all of my friends from the south side, most of them Irish. Mm -hmm. It was like that was always an option while communicating. Oh, it was yeah. Oh, it was yeah. like, oh, I could just punch him in the face. <laughs> and it was like it was just so common that just like, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, you know, like this guy said something to me. I could, you know, rebut it. I could laugh about it. I could ignore it or I could just kick him in the fucking head, you know? <laughs> Tear a picket off a fence and beat him with it. But that works sometimes. I I guess for those you know, guys. I guess. Although, like, just I lived so vicariously through my violent Irish South Side friends, like, and found out things like you can kick the shit out of a human being, but if like you break their windshield, Oof. you're in trouble. That's when you go to prison. Like, property damage. Oh yeah. Like you get you get hauled in front of a judge. But just a bunch of fucking dummies hitting each other. It's like, nah. go home, you idiots. Yeah. Well, the you Chicago know. cops, that, that, that's a very like, uh, come on, come on, come on, cut yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. But if you do something physical to someone's property, right. Right. You, now you're in trouble. Now yeah, you've you done some real damage. you got insurance companies involved and you yeah. know. Just hit them in the head. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why the Irish do it. Just hit them in the just fucking head. I'm are, going to Ireland yeah. soon. As the, as when I worked it for a mover, the uh, the old movers would say, uh, "Skin grows back, veneer doesn't." Oh, that's actually you know? really good. So, like when you're going, how many times a, did like, you chip? Did you chip stuff? Is that why? No, no they just they, they thought they were clever. Did you have you know? Did you have uh, a lot of odd jobs growing up like this? Were you like a? You said you built with these hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I had a fair amount of. I I mean, if you count a paper route, I've been working since I was thirteen. Yeah, I do. Um, of course. Yeah, and so I had paper routes. I had uh, a couple different paper routes that was like one was a daily where you had to get you know get up and get it out every morning. Mm -hmm. The Aurora Beacon News. Shout out Aurora Beacon News. You know it. You know um, it, and you love it. And uh, and then the other was like a weekly shopper that was like five hundred papers. Ugh. You know, like that that went out once a week, but it was like all over town and right. And you know, and I was doing it at like thirteen, but of course someone had to fucking drive me. How am I going to take 500 papers Couldn't on, lug on it. my bike? Yeah. Nah. Um, Unless you got really good saddlebags. Yeah. <laughs> or even just, the, even yeah, or then. just an auxiliary sibling to, you know, just be a pack mule. You're young, your younger you. brother. You yeah, ride yeah. next to me. Right, right. All right. And just hand me the yeah. papers as we go. Yeah. You pull a wagon. Um, but then I, uh, m my stepfather had a plumbing business and I worked for him, uh, both in the shop, like, you know, selling repair parts. Mm -hmm. Um, but then also going out and being, helping plumbers, you know, like. You can plumb. Mm, yeah, plumbing I can do pretty well. So if um, I call you over, is that? Uh, I mean, you know, my rate is higher than the average. You'd probably be better just to, you know. But what if I, I like, I, I, I like quality. <laughs> I want I want the plumber to be someone that's fun to look at as well. And you're a pretty man. Yeah, yeah. I don't want well, some, some, I don't a, want some there's uggo up, cleaning up my pipe. charge for topless too, so. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> In here, we pour whiskey, whiskey.
Today's episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Simply Safe Home Security. Here at the Whisk Ginge, we believe that uh, the home should be the safest place on earth for every single family. And that's why I use and recommend Simply Safe. Simply Safe is advanced home security that puts you, your home, and your family safety first. Here's why I love it. I love the cameras. I like to see what's going on in the neighborhood, man. They got 24-7 professional monitoring. Uh, Simply Safe's agents take action the moment a threat is detected, which is incredible. Uh, they also offer comprehensive protection, not only against intruders and burglary, but against expensive home hazards from flooding to fires, which I think is very, very cool. And look, monitoring plans are affordable, priced at a dollar a day with no long-term contract or any kind of hidden fees, because that feeling safe at home, that's worth a dollar a day. You're spending nine bucks a day on coffee. What are you doing, you nutbag? Don't you want to keep your house safe? Uh, they use proprietary video verification technology so that monitoring uh, agents can visually confirm the threat in order to get higher priority for 9-11 dispatch or 911 dispatch. It's the same thing. You type it in the same way. Um, I got to tell you, Simply Safe, I like very much. I like to see what's going on. A lot of package thieves going around my hood right now, and we're catching you guys stealing some of my products. All right. I got some shampoo in there last time that got stolen. Uh, also, somebody got away with some water, uh, so- water shoes, you know, like... Uh, so you can walk in the ocean without stepping on rocks. Uh, somebody stole those from me for some reason. But I caught him on camera doing it, and I hollered, Get out of here! So I just like to shake him up a little bit. No home invasions for your boy, thank God. But also, the cameras and all the safety and protection that you get from Simply Safe does let them know. They see the sign. Hey, man, don't come knocking around these doors. You're not coming inside this house. You can customize the perfect system for you in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash whiskey. You know what it is. It's simplysafe.com slash whiskey. Um, and, and if you go there, you can claim uh, your free indoor security camera plus 20%. Plus 20% off with inter- with interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafe.com slash whiskey. Simplysafe.com slash whiskey. Hey, when it comes to shoes on your feet, they got to feel as good as they look. That's why I'm here to talk about some Rothies. I love the Rothies. Uh, they sent us a bunch of different pairs. And uh, their knit style and comfort are super soft, perfectly cushioned sneakers. Uh, This signature sneaker has classic look that goes with literally almost everything, especially because you know your boy dresses like a weirdo. Uh, It's a perfect mix of casual and elevated. They're one-of-a-kind driving loafers come in classic colors, eye-catching patterns made for the modern man, which I am, a modern man. Men's Health Magazine, which has yet yet to feature me on the cover for some reason, uh, said that they were uh, wowed by the sleek, up-cycled shoes that look just as great as they feel. Uh, and I agree. I agree. I think they meant upscaled. No, upcycled, maybe. It is upcycled, so maybe that's true. It can go both ways. Uh, they're all sustainably made, which is incredible. Machine washable and built to last. Uh, I really like how comfortable they are. I, I wear them in the yard when I'm playing with the dog, because I love that, man. They're very washable, which I love. The washability, you can throw them in the whoosha. They bing, bang, bang around, and then you get them out, and they're very clean. Um, there's a big hype around uh, all these new shoe companies and what they offer. And I got to tell you, uh, Rothy's is pretty incredible. Uh, they're they're unique, and yet they're also very fashionable. You can you can wear them in almost any occasion. All right, I don't know what you wear to every occasion, but I do know you could wear these things to almost every occasion. Okay, try them out. Find out what all the hype is about. Discover your new favorite pair of shoes and get twenty dollars off. Twenty bucks off your first purchase at rothys.com slash whiskey. That's rothys r o t h y s dot com slash whiskey for twenty dollars off your first order. Rothys.com slash whiskey. Ginger, I like gingers. But yeah, so I you know crawling <laughs> under houses as a kid and like uh, I remember I, I I live in Burbank and there's a there's a uh, like a little burrito stand. And before school one day, I took my daughter there and we we're getting burritos and it was, or it wasn't even before school because it was summertime. And I saw like some eight-year-old kid with his dad who was like a, a drywaller or a carpenter or something. And the kid's eating breakfast. And I'm just like, oh my God, that kid's going to work with his dad. Yeah. And it was like such, I was like, just this abyss of sadness of like, how, what a bummer that is, you know? Or like, what a great bonding moment between the son and the father. Right, no, are you here, if you're going to do it, point that. it at me. Point yeah. it right at me. There it is. Let me catch. Ah. No, um, it, that is sad. Whenever I see the, like I saw the, uh, um, I saw that recently too about a, 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 okay, in my neighborhood I was driving by and these people are adding a second level to their home and they were uh, redoing the fence 
uh, to put up like a fence. So if stuff falls, it won't hit the other house. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Saying like a guard protection. Sure, sure. And one of the men that was there was yelling down. And, and as I drive by, I look at who he's yelling at. And it's got to be like a 10-year-old guy, yeah, kid. Yeah. And he's throwing stuff up to him. And I was like, damn, that kid, that kid is putting in the fucking work at 10 years old. I mean, we yeah. were... Yeah, I was yeah. I was garage hopping. I was stealing and <laughs> I was stealing and causing chaos in the right, neighborhood. Right, right, right. Yeah, and this this poor kid's putting in the hours with his old man. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you could uh, from the outside people would go like, "Oh, what a wonderful thing! You're passing on a trade." But it's like, no, it's awful. Yeah, he's and yeah. it's like that kid wants to be a kid. A, and eighty five percent of the time, dad's not happy about what he fucking does for a living. Right, he's bummed. So it's not like he's going, "Son, let me," you know open your eyes to the world of tile setting. <laughs> it's like, get that fucking tile in here, kid. Yeah. What the, f- where the fuck you been? Get yeah. your head out of your ass, you know? And the kid Don't is like, walk on that. Doing my best. Yeah. Your best isn't good enough. Right, right. That's why we should have given you away. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, we were going to give you up. Now hand me that fucking divider now. <laughs> but I needed the help. I needed free labor. <laughs> free labor. Um, so I worked for my stepdad and then my mom, um, she started – she she just kind of fell into the kitchen business because my stepdad uh, kind of, you know, to expand his business, brought in like just some cheap shit cabinets that, mm-hmm. you know, were like – and he, they, you just ordered from a catalog, like basically what you do at Ikea. But, Same you know, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that – my mom just kind of – she took over that part of the business and then it just kind of grew till she, you know, was like a very accomplished, excellent – I mean, she should have been – she's like one of those – 50s women that probably should have been an engineer, right. but was an English major and a mom, you know. Um, because society restrictions were kinda, like, you're not yeah. allowed to have real work. Kind of, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I always, uh, that kind of thing is always like, yeah, but there were some lady engineers, but she just, you know, I don't know. But I think it was so counterculture, right? You had to fight it pretty is, hard to absolute, break through that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It was not, it was not like, oh, you know, like, oh, you'd like to be a math major. That's good. It'd be like, you want to be a math major? Why? Yeah, yeah. Well, you think about it. I mean, like, you know, my mother, I mean- my mom got a divorce from my dad because he was going to jail all the time. Yeah, that's a And problem. my grandmother was like, why would you get a divorce? He's like, that's the era where it's like, you got to yeah, stick yeah. it out. Right, right. He's going to come around. You know, yeah. He, it, he'll figure but this out. or worse. Right. Were you not listening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. That, there we do have this, this the, 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 that, I'm glad those ideologies have changed because this puritanical vision of like what you're supposed to be, that's a good, good thing about- <laughs> society going very progressive where you're like, yeah, let people fucking swing all the bats they want to swing because, uh, saying you can only do this thing or you're not supposed to do this thing. It was only restrictive. It right, was never, right. po- it was never anything good came out of it. Well, and also a lot of that, like there's a lot of that is just like, it's keeping women down. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a whole system and, and you know, you don't think about it until, you know, the tables start to turn and the way that, you know, things are kind of, you know, now, especially like just sort of the the switch from majority to minority white. Yeah. Um, it's like you do realize like, oh, yeah, you keep women out of the workforce. There's a lot more room for mediocre men in the workforce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, if you, you know, like, yeah, you you should stay home. Like, and I don't know, I don't know if it's a conscious decision that like, yeah, keep them home because you don't want them as your boss. Right, that's whatever. probably what it is. I guess, but yeah. I mean, but it is like, oh yeah, there's if you're if you don't want to fire on all cylinders, keeping half of the population out of the workforce is a pretty sweet deal. Easy way to do yeah, it. Yeah, for lazy. I want a woman fucks. boss because I do like to be yelled at by women. <laughs> I I I am fine with women bosses. Sure. There's just like so much less nonsense. I don't yeah. this notion that like women are too emotional or whatever, it's just like that's crazy. They're just like men are way more emotional. Oh, they're more emotional, just stupid and, and like angry, uh, quick to get angry. Yeah. Well, that's my thing. If a woman, if a guy was my, if I, if I have a man boss and he yells at me, immediately I'm like, I'm gonna fucking knock this guy. I'm gonna beat the shit out of this guy. Yeah. Because you're like, this is just male ego aggression. He's right, yelling right. at me for no fucking reason. Right. It's just to hold something over. But if I have a, a, a woman superior and she says something, you're like. Yeah, I probably should fuck that, stop that, cut that out, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. That, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. She's probably right. She's probably right. Yeah, but this, yeah. but this guy yelling at me, it's because it's male ego bullshit. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, the, you know that we're strong. Because I had a million fucking annoying trash jobs. I worked. I've talked about it on this show a bunch, but I've worked so many shitty jobs for so many assholes. And only once in a while do you get someone that you like 
really get along with that that isn't that knows your experience is shit. So they're trying to yeah. be a, a little bit nicer to you because you're like, come on, man, I'm getting paid four bucks a year to do this yes, job. Yes. Leave me the fuck alone. I'm trying. That's why I give credit whenever I see somebody in any sort of like uh, uh, service position in our society. If they're <laughs> like, if they're kind of mad and they fuck you off a little bit, like a server or someone, if they're just like, what? I, I really like it. Yeah. Because I'm kind of like, yeah, you deserve to fucking yeah, be yeah. mean to me. What am I, I coming into the thing and you got to do the thing. There's some of them that I, I agree with you most of the I'll time. I'll take the because hit. I like, I, the most, I agree with you most of the time and I don't need to be, I don't need to have smoke blown up my ass when I'm no. having a, you know, getting a plate of enchiladas somewhere, you know, right. it's like, <laughs> yeah. um, but there are, I, there are times when I, because and I don't know, I, I guess it was just instilled in me. Like even every shitty job I had, I, I, I did a good job. Me too. Like, it's like, if you're going to pay me, I'm going to do a good job. No, I agree. And that's I, not I did for that. you. That's for me. Yes. You know, I'm because it's like, that's the deal. That's what right. being a professional is. And that's like, there's a coffee place near me. And there was this woman that worked there who I just, I just was always hearing her talk to industry people. Like, I think she wanted to be in a filmmaker of some mm -hmm. kind. And she'd always be talking about like, she has a shoot on Saturday or something like, and, and, uh, you know, and somebody would come in and say, and she'd say, what are you writing? And they'd say a screenplay. She'd brighten up and like, what are you writing? So obviously, and then kind of felt, and then, but then also I had this attitude like, well, this coffee place, this just is just, I'm just filling time here. Mm -hmm. And then she consistently got my order wrong. <laughs> and I was like, I actually might be in a position someday to give you a job. Yeah. But you, at the thing that you're getting paid for right now, don't give a fuck. Right. And I, and so it just, and I mean, and I'm not like, I'm not a princess, but like at least three times I've had to come back to you and say. It's oat milk. Yeah. God this damn is it. Wrong, you God know? Like, damn it. And so it's, it's like, if you want me to think that you're like a good worker, Show me good, good work. work. Yeah. No matter what the work is. Well, I had that mentality, but I think that's that's us. That's a Midwest thing. Like, yeah, probably. My parents right. were always like, it's McDonald's, but it's a job. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to fucking do it. Right. And it's like, well, you you th what other jobs are there? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know. That's this is all I could get. Yeah, yeah. Except I will say the laziest, I've always put in a lot of good effort, except when I was a lifeguard. Uh, I let an old man drown and die. And uh, did you really? No, but it was. Oh but, my god! No, he didn't die, but he did. He did. Dr an older man drowned, and we saved him. Um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Barker, but he, but he's dead we, now. Like, he's dead out now. The chair, like, where you go tonight? <laughs> well, you know, I was always looking oh. at the other girls. I was always looking at glub, the other girls. Glub. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? Flip over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just was not paying attention, and he was. Uh, I think he something. He had cramped up or something, and he couldn't swim. Wow. He made it. He's alive. He's dead now. He's dead now. Yeah, but yeah, that, yeah. That's not going to swim. But he was old, right? right yeah, right. he was going to go anyway. Right, right. But they exactly. would make me do the later shifts after I already went to school and I was tired and I had basketball practice. And then I would do like sometimes the night shifts at the YMCA, and I fucking hated it. Which is like when to when? I think the night was was like nine to ten thirty or something oh, wow. like that. Yeah, yeah. It was. I was miserable. I was done. Yeah. So I had gone to school. I had done basketball. And then I had gotten something to eat and then I would go to the Y and I would do either uh, kids basketball, which I love the kids basketball coaching. That was so fun. Cause I just yeah. fucked around. Yeah. Yeah. But then when I got to the, had to do lifeguard, I was, it was so fucking miserable because it was only older people swimming laps Yes, and it was monotonous. It, yeah. I mean, it was like just staring at like the same, like, right. <gasps> right. Oh, I hated it so yeah, much. Yeah. And so, yeah, I let a guy almost die on my watch. And they fired me. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah, they started. Oops. Well, I got fired as a lifeguard, but they kept me as a basketball uh, coach. Because the kids. Yeah. yeah. I'm good with the kids. They're harder to kill. Yes, way yeah, harder. Yeah, you can much, throw them oh, really yeah, hard yeah, against yeah. the wall. An old man on a pool, thats he's halfway into the ground. That's what he Literally. wants. Literally. Yes. Literally. That's what he wants. Yeah. Um, you're work now you're Now that you're not doing that show with the other orange uh, freak. Yeah. Uh, you're doing your own podcast now, which is great. Mm -hmm. It's called. I, I, it's called the Three Questions, and yep. I, I was doing it before we ended too. I, uh, and it was in classic, classic form. I, I had had people tell me you should do a podcast for a long time. You got you know, a great voice. Just do something, anything, just do something. But that was one of the things that people would tell me: do a podcast. Yeah, and I felt like. 
I, I, I was like, again, Midwestern. I felt like, what do I know about podcasts? And and also I had friends like Jimmy Pardo and Scott Aukerman who yeah. were like truly there at the beginning of podcasts. Yeah. And I would have felt like such a fucking asshole. I'm on TV. Put me on one too. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, I was always kind of leery. And then I finally thought, eh, you know what? Why not? Like, let's start saying yes to stuff more than saying no to stuff. So I said, yeah, you know what? I will do one. And it, and it was, and I had this one in mind too, the one that I'm doing. And then like, like, I mean, it had already been in the works, but I just hadn't heard about it. Like literally three days later, there's this big announcement. Conan's doing a podcast. Asshole. And I was like, motherfucker. Why didn't I think of this like a month ago? Fucking Conan. Oh, always. And we hate Conan, right? Fucking cock blocking me. Oh, so much. We hate Conan. Ooh. We hate Conan. No, I don't hate him. I don't hate him. I'm just teasing. I mean, I wouldn't, if I hated him, I wouldn't say shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to say. tease him. Yeah, 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 yeah. you wouldn't say it. No, you... I love him. That's why I can tease him openly in public. But uh, but yeah, the podcast is called The Three Questions. Um, and it was, I basically wanted to have the kind of conversations uh, that I like to have, especially like in commercial breaks at the, at the Conan show. Because that's right. when I would always, and like the stuff that would interest me are kind of like, workplace kind of things like yeah. what when does your day start like that kind of thing like if you you know you talk to a soap star i want to know like what's your day like what's it like being a soap star like yeah. that shit's always interesting to me and how did you get to be that is right. always interesting to me so and i also uh i've done a ton of therapy in my life so i i like it when people can think about where they come from and what they've been through and why it affect, why it makes them who they are. Mm. So these three questions are, uh, where have you been, where are you going, and what have you learned? Wow. And um, where do you come from is technically what I always say. But um, Where you come from, where, where are you, you come going, from, where are you going, and what have you learned? From Chicago, nowhere, mm -hmm. not enough. Right, right. That's, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of it Don't it, Yeah, don't pee on, an, on a live wire. Like that's a good. That's good a good one. Mm -hmm. Did you have you ever grabbed a electric fence before? With both hands, idiot, and fucking Love it. got thrown <laughs> off it. I was about six years old. I was about six years old. Grabbed on with both hands. Because you're from farm town, that had yeah, to have been yeah, around you. Absolutely. My my stepdad is from the mountains of North Carolina, and they had the, the, his parents had cows and all this shit. And I touched an electric fence one time, and holy shit. Yeah. It fucked me up. I yeah. thought I was like, oh, how, how strong could... You think it's not that strong. Mm -hmm. It gets yeah. your ass. And especially, like I said, I grabbed on with two hands. Two hands. hands. So it... Conducted through your body. Right yeah, through it me. like circled through And me. it did kind of throw me off. And I, you know, I went into the house crying. And of course, like what moms do, they put, put me in the tub and yep. like my... Maybe some more. Both of the palms... Oh my goodness. Well, you wow. finished. Just a little bit to finish, um, you know? The Both of the palms of my hands look like like gin blossoms, you know, like the no, like in an Alki's nose, yep, yep. like every blood vessel was like to the surface. Mm. It was crazy. It was, I was like, ah! Your hands were radiant. Yeah, That's yeah. where the thumb thing started. Could be, could be. You said it was from a golf cart. Are you a golfer or no? I am, I am. How, are you good? I'm, I'm, I was, I've used, I was better, but you know, I mean, I'm, by better, I mean mid nineties kind of, you know. It's fine. That's the average. Good day, yeah. On a good day, low, 90, you know, um, but I, I just don't play that much anymore. My attention span for it, like golf is too fucking long. It's long. It should be 12 or 13 holes. Yeah, Brooks Kepka, I think. So. Or no, not Brooks Kepka. Um, yeah, maybe it was him. Oh, I can't remember what golfer said this. Fuck, I wish I remember. Yeah. But they were like, yeah, I think it was Brooks. And he and he was like, uh, he's like. Because he's kind of funny, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, and the, and the yeah, host yeah. was like, do you think golf is too long? He's like, yeah, man, I kind of, like, I black out. From like twelve to fifteen, ah, he's like I disappear, and then I'm I come back way. at sixteen, and he's like that could have just we could have just knocked out those holes. Well, what about just play nine? You know, this is a whole campaign. Oh, I know. Just I, play nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I and that was, um, because <laughs> I played golf as a kid, but never learned how to play golf. I mean, I just basically had a baseball swing yeah. and adjusted, but was played sports and was athletic enough to just kind of. Get by. Be able to play golf and play a wicked slice, like aim really far left and sort of judge it and sure. know about what's going to happen and kind of use a five iron 12 different ways, you sure. know. Um, but then I stopped uh, in college and didn't play for a while. 
And then it was actually when I was on the Conan show, uh, uh, our executive producer was a big golfer and other people started playing. And so I, on a whim at Paragon Sports one day, bought just like a set of like, you know, Habushibas or whatever, some, you know, okay. knockoff brand of, of clubs. I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll get back into it. But I realized it was as if I had never played before. Like You're starting again. And yeah, totally starting from scratch and had to really learn how to swing a golf club yeah. and really do it right. And then, um, and was terrible for a long time and used to get mad and then, you know, like would be furious and then wonder why am I doing this? And then, but I mean, I always, you know, like when I was a kid, I'd be furious and then I'd be, you know, an hour later, see, drive by a golf course and go like, oh man, I wish God, I was out there. I'd love to play that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, uh, so I learned, I got slowly better, but real when I really started, when I really kind of turned around and got to be where, because all I wanted was a game that didn't require a lot of maintenance. Yeah. Just so that, you know, I could play once, like say once a quarter and not embarrass myself. Like That's just something. be okay. Yeah, be you know? fine. Yeah, like have in around like three shots where people are like, hey, good shot. Hey, or Andy. Like, nice, nice putt what or a nice putt. chip. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so after, after I came out here and, uh, and, and, did my the first sitcom Andy Richter controls the universe, and then it got canceled. And did you get a bottle of scotch? Mm, I don't think I got any. Fuck. I got it. You, you know, got a phone call? You, I, yeah. It's no. over, kid. I got. I think I got the the sign from my parking space. In here. We pour whiskey, whiskey. Hey, after years of fine print and contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers like I've been doing my whole life, finally make the switch to Mint Mobile. Okay? Mint Mobile, there's no catch. You usually think there's some kind of catch. They offer premium wireless starting at 15 bucks a month. $15 a month. I thought, what's the catch? After uh, talking to them, their service, it all made sense. There is no catch. The secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They don't got no storefront. They don't need no storefront. They cut out the cost of retail stores, pass along them savings directly to you, my friend. And for anybody who hates their phone bill, uh, which I did for a long time, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for 15 bucks a month. They give you the best rate, whether you're buying one uh, for you or your family. Uh, the family lines start at two lines, and all plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G and network. Use your phone. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with your existing contacts. Come on, man. You don't got to change almost anything but switching your server. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. Is there anything more affordable than $15 a month for a, for a cell phone? It's pretty remarkable. You get to keep the one that's in your pocket. Whether you got an iPhone 13 Pro Max or you got the uh, iPhone 5. Whatever you got, ma, we can still use it with Mint Mobile. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, that's impressively cheap, and get the plan uh, shipped to your door for free, for free, they'll ship it to you, go to mintmobile.com slash whiskey, that's mintmobile.com slash whiskey, cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile, mintmobile.com slash whiskey. Ginger, I like gingers. How old were you when you got Andy Richter, the show? Mm, well, was 34? 34? Something like, yeah, 34. Where'd you come from? You said you, that was from Illinois or no? No, that was, I had, uh, I went from Chicago to, uh, well, I d we did a show called The Real Live Brady Bunch in, in Chicago that yeah. went to New York, then LA. Then I was with Conan from 93 to 2000. And then I came out here uh, to, to do Andy Richter Controls the Universe. Wow. Um, and, and you stayed since. And I stayed since, yeah. But I, after it was canceled, which, like, hurt me way more than I was willing to admit. Like, really kind of fucked me up. Wow. And, and I, there was, and also, too, it was like, it just kind of coincided, too, with 9-11 uh, and the the hit that the economy took mm. and there had been a threatened strike of some kind, writer strike or whatever. So they had like pushed a bunch of production through. So right when the show got canceled, there was just nothing happening. And I didn't work for like 10 months. And That's I had heavy. a, I had a kid that, you know, like I would drive to daycare and stuff or to preschool. And instead of, you know, going and writing a screenplay or whatever, I'd go to 
Roosevelt in in Griffith Park and work on my golf game. That's good. That's, like a that's, genius. That's good too. Yeah, because that's really where the fucking. That's where the money that's is. That's where the money is. <laughs> that's where you get all the good ideas. Game. Yeah, yeah. Actually, but it depends on if you golf with some people that are in the business. Maybe something falls in your lap. Yeah, and that's what usually, I tell no, myself. No, usually what I what happened uh, what happened was is I would golf with old Korean men who would give me a tip that made a difference. Where I'd be like, you know, that would help me understand the golf swing. Right. You know, they this and it is it does get to be a weird a weird obsession of this one, this one very particular gesture that ideally should not change Mm -hmm. and that you, and that you, and that there's like a dozen parts that can go wrong and you're just trying to replicate this thing over and over and over. Uh, and it, it can be very like, it can be a, a compulsion. Oh yeah. And I definitely was, it was a compulsion for a while. Um, and then I did, I got good and that was even better. I mean, I got like, you know, pretty good. And, um, uh, but then I could never maintain it. I so could now it's over it. now. It's not over. I was going to invite you golfing. I was it's, like, let's I would, go. Oh, I would love to play golf sometime. But I mean, but I have friends now that invite me to play golf. It's, it's, it'll be better now because it's not school time. But like, cause I got a kid to drive to school yeah. either in the morning or pick up in the afternoon. And you can't, you know, all my, everybody I play, I play mostly with, Conan crew guys, and they're all out, you know, Moore Park and out there. Chatsworth. So it's like, yeah. yeah. So it's like, I can't drive to Moore Park and back, go, drive to Moore Park, play 18 holes and be either, you yeah. know, for a morning drop off or an afternoon pickup. We'll my, stay local. Yeah, yeah We'll yeah, do yeah. something local. But my daughter, my daughter's 16 now, so she, and she'll be able to drive herself from now on. So You're going to buy her a car? I already leased her a car. Yeah. Is it a nice car? It is. It's a. I mean, it's a. It's a. It's a. Uh, a simple car, but it's a Volkswagen. It's like a little Volkswagen Jetta? station wagon. Oh, no, oh. it's a little Volkswagen um, SUV. It's called a Taos, and it's Ooh. like the base model. And it's uh, it, you know, it wasn't very expensive. And uh, you did the right thing. She's really thrilled with it. I also I got it for her mainly because I knew that if she if she finishes driving, you know, like driver, I got her AAA driver's lessons and I knew that if she'd finished and then it was like, all right, let's go get your license. She would be like, mm, can we go next week? Mm-hmm. She just like, because of off. the anxiety would have pushed it off. So I was like, if there's a car sitting outside the house and that's when I gave her the car, which I, cause my son, there was no point in, you're not going to surprise him with a car. He's like, he gets his license. Let's go get a car. And my mm-hmm. son also too was like, just he's so reasonable. So you know, it, there was no like, I want this, I want that. It's like, what do you think about this safe Subaru Impreza? It's cool. That's Is that great. what you wanted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's no, cool. that's what I said. Oh, oh, oh this oh, oh. Subaru Impreza, and he's like, it's awesome. I love it. You know, perfect. I'm like, do you care? It's not leather seats. No, don't give a shit. No, yeah, yeah. When you're that age, you just want something that moves. No, well, some, some. Well, see, because we, I came from a place where like, pff, someone buy, getting a, bought a car was insane. Like anybody, I knew a couple of kids right. growing up that someone bought them, like their parents bought them a car, and I was like, holy fuck, they bought you a new car? Absolutely, that was crazy. We got it. We got bought a used car that my brother and I shared, which was a 1973 Buick Century. Hey, Century moved, man. <laughs> Buick was, made some good whips. No, it was a huge. We were a Buick a family. Huge V8 we, engine. We had the Park Avenue. We had a LeSabre. We had a yeah, LaSalle. Yeah. We it name a, a fucking Buick. We yeah. had it. Cutlass. It was an, it, we had the. We did have to. By the time we even got it, like the vinyl seats were all crispy and broken. Mm-hmm. So we went to some cheap shit. Reupholstery yeah, place. Re-upholstered. It was always reupholstered, <laughs> cracked dash and everything. Crack but dash. It fucking went. Those it's things like, were cruisers, man. But it was also man. too like the like say this is the range of the accelerator. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Full on. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> so whenever we'd loan it to other kids, we'd have to like be like you'd be careful with the yeah. accelerator because it was like whoa, yeah. fuck. You it know, goes zero to holy fucking yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah. We hit a pole. And the, the brakes were the same way, just like all gush and then grab and as hard as you can. Yeah, yeah. Did you learn stick when you were a kid? I did. I did. I yeah. learned. My aunt, uh, my aunt got divorced and moved back to our hometown. In her uh, diesel Peugeot. Oh, the Peugeot. And I and I learned on a diesel Peugeot, which a diesel car is like so forgiving. You can take off in third, and it'll chug. It'll but figure it it'll, out. It'll, it'll figure it out. Yeah, the car's like, like nah, it's not going to stall. Right. It's going to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Which, and, and then I had a few. I, I owned a few uh, over the years. Like my first car was a uh, my my first personal car was a Toyota pickup that had stick. Oh yeah, uh, and I like driving. All those old like Toyotas were stick. Were, yeah, the and, you can, and the box was kind of showing. One. Yeah, like yeah. the cheapest one, sure. Um, but With then, and then crank. I had like a, and my ex wife called it a midlife crisis. But I got a a Mini Cooper John Cooper Works, which is like the souped up Mini oh, Coopers. Sure, and it had it had a six speed in, or a five speed, I think. That's not and a midlife was, crisis. It was really fun. No, that's what I said. I said this. No, this that's is like a, a Porsche. This is a or like fun a, car. Yeah. This is a fun car that's reasonably priced. It's right. not, you know. Well, but I did have to get rid of it when my daughter got big enough, because my there's five years between my kids and my my daughter, and also my ex wife had the big family car. So it's like I'm going to and from work mostly. Why don't I? I could just have a little car. Right. But then my daughter got to the point where she could kick me in the back of the head <laughs> because I had to keep the seat so far back. It's like, okay, I got to. You got to switch it up. I got to get a grown up car now. So if you ever did have a midlife crisis. Yeah. What's the thing you would splurge and buy that's ridiculous? If you were ever going to have that moment of fucking, what am I doing? Uh, Did you ever have something? It would pre- no, no. I've always been pretty, pretty reasonable. I mean, like, I, I, and certainly, you know, um, my ex-wife and I were married for seven years before we had kids, and I made a good living. So we, we bought shit. You bought a lot of bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I would, I would, you know, I would make the joke. I'd say. You know, um, you know, most of my money or most of my money is uh, I put it into small electronics, mm-hmm. which just meant I bought shit. You bought a I bunch just of bullshit. Bought a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, they're like, oh, you have cameras Apple stock. Like, yeah, no, 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 no. I just have, I have four cameras. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have six watches or just dumb shit like yeah. that. Um, and then you have kids, and you don't do that anymore. Right. And then you and you look back on it and think that was dumb. Jesus Christ, I could, I you know, like I could have put in some of that. I could still have some of that money now. What would you do with it now? I, w- I would have, you know, uh, well, now now I would buy a house of my own because I live in a rented house because I got mm-hmm. divorced and we still are holding on to our family house until my daughter gets out of high school. Right. So, I mean, I could swing buying a house, although it's a terrible market to buy a house in, and I could swing it and do it and then have nothing. Like, like literally like not be able to go to Chicago to visit my family. Right. Just because the money would be spread so thin and so unliquid. Um, but in terms of like, I would, I would love to have a boat. That would be probably, Ooh. I would like to that's have a boat. That's a midlife boat. crisis vibe. And that's, yeah. And it is like a thing that's like, you really got to be devoted. You got to be a boat, boat guy. Yeah. You're, it's like buying a family or something that. <laughs> You know, you have to visit it. You have to clean it. You know, <laughs> you have to make sure that it stays out of the storms right. and stuff. You and you got to fix it all the time. Yeah. So much repair. And, well, and the shit too is like, it's always amazing to me because I like to fish. And every time you go fishing to someone, you realize they have to, you take a boat on the ocean, you have to hose that entire motherfucker down. There's like an hour and a half of work. Yeah, they haven't figured that out of, though. They haven't figured out a way to like know. make it so you don't have to do I that. I don't. I guess not. See, it's I just, like cars don't rust like so they used corrosive. to. Yeah, I know, but they figured cars don't rust like they used to because they figured out a lot of ways to like yeah. plate it so it doesn't. Right, right. Uh, you tell me, boats can't do that. But I guess because it's a floaty thing. It's, it's a the floaty ocean. thing. Yeah, yeah. And I the guess. ocean is pretty serious business. So I know boats. I, I always love being on a boat. Mm-hmm. I, I like it. There, there's a the comedy club in. Um, in Madison, Wisconsin, the comedy on state's run by this amazing family, and they have a, a fun little boat, and they took us out last time on their boat when I was up there doing shows. And the whole time, my buddy Chris O'Connor, who I was with, was like, dude, we should go somewhere where we can get it. Like, you can get a boat. Like, you should yeah. buy it. And I was like, yeah, dude, this is – being on someone else's boat, heavenly. Yes. Being on your own boat, anxiety, stress, Absolutely. anxiety, it's a nightmare. Absolutely. Anytime you have a boat, you can tell they're always like, guys, uh, uh, it's always, it's like when you host a party and someone's like, are you having fun? You're like, no, yeah, no. you're at my fucking house. No, I'm cooking. Yeah. This is a nightmare. I'm cooking. I, I'm, I'm thinking cleaning. about I'm, shit yeah, yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. I might have one beer when I, and it's over and yeah. you're gone. And then I'll be bummed because I found out that, you know, I've got to go get more propane because you ran out. You know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, it's it's not a, being on other boats, phenomenal. Having your own boat, everyone I know is always like, it's a fucking headache. Yeah, yeah. You know what I would have though? I w- what? A wave runner. Yeah, those are pretty fun. Oh my those God. Those are pretty fun. And those you don't need to do shit to. Yeah, and if they yeah, break, yeah. you're like, ah, oh, what are you going to yeah. do? It's a fucking wave runner. I do, I do get like uh, a, a nerve. Like there is something about going that fast 
and I, that over the ocean, over waves, where I get like, ah, you get nervous. Is, yeah, yeah. Do you feel like if you fall in, you're gonna die? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm not. Yeah, it's weird because I love being on the ocean, but it, being in the ocean is terrifying to me. That's funny because I, it, I'm the opposite. Really? I'd rather be in the water than on the boat. Oh wow! Because I feel for some reason I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I'd rather be that than on that thing. Feels like something bad can happen, but I'm in there. I'm like, what's really good? So the shark's gonna get me, I guess. Right, right. right but right. is it though? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah, but if the boat goes down, you'll be in your sweet spot. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you bulletproof. Let's the whole sink thing. this thing. They're like, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah. I'm just digging a hole in the middle of the boat. Just I'm more comfortable this way. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when it sinks. Like if you've seen those videos of like spring break or whatever. And it's like, there, there's one famous one that's gone viral many a times of, of like a crew of hot women on a speedboat. And the guy's got his glasses and his hair. Is, yeah. 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 You know, and they're cruising by and then they hit a bump and everybody does this and they hit another bump and then they hit one they all fly. so violent. It's like, <laughs> Yeah, the camera goes out. It's like, and their heads all smash, and it yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think of on boats. Yep. <laughs> and also, too, like the the like aftermath of that is they're all getting up. Like they're going from like being hot influencers to being like, ow, right? You know, <laughs> that's see, that's what Jackass, that's what Johnny Knoxville was missing was that whole the the premise was watch people get hurt. Yeah. But hot people getting hurt is so much funnier. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like regular looking yes. people is fine, yes. but I want I want a show where it's really beautiful people getting fucked right. up. Right. Right. Then it then I'm Absolutely. I'm tuned in. Cuz if a normal looking person gets hurt, you're like, "Oh, that's funny, but it also looks painful that to yeah. see those guys get kicked in their car." Like like when that goose flew in Fabio's face on that roller Amazing. coaster. Amazing. If that had been, I don't know, pick anybody. If that had been like, you know, Regis Philbin, yeah, well, no, that actually funny would be again. So good. Funny yeah, again, yeah. but let's okay. Let's I don't know who. Just pick someone like um, anybody on the evening news here. Yeah, you know, or like a, a baseball player. You sure. know, just you, you know, a normal baseball. player. Yeah, a normal average. You know, uh, three baseball. You know, like two, Ryan Sandberg. Hey, 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 hey. God bless. I hope you never get hurt, Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> By the way, it Ryan. took me it took me my whole life to know it was Ryan, was not Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because my dad got me a a, a picture of. The, of a, uh, a picture of him that he had signed yeah. at like a conference that my dad went to and he gave it to me. By the way, dad, you still owe that to me. It's in his basement and it's framed and I'm like, isn't that mine? He's like, uh, it's mine. I'm like, didn't you give it to me? Fucker. Fucker, that's what I say to him. But it's Ryan Sandberg and yeah. I, for years, thought it was that's Ryan. Some, like Norwegian shit. Ryan. Yeah, yeah, Ryan. But it's, it's but also your name is Ryan, so cut it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. At some point, you should have just changed it just to changed Ryan. It. Right, right. One of the greatest cubbies of all time. Yeah. But I, but I forever now, uh, if I do sell this show of hot people getting hurt brutally, it'll be presented by Andy Richter. And oh, Andrew I, that'd be great. That'd let's, be great. Let's, we should host a show where we watch people get hurt brutally, but they're beautiful. Yes, yes, gorgeous. And who's hurting them? Ugly people. And and I, the one that I always love is that when they go like, they they're fine though. Everyone was fine. <laughs> like they always have to say that <laughs> yeah, so you, yeah. you can't feel bad. Nobody died. But then there's some the really cheap shit shows. They don't, you know, like there's somewhere they don't say that. Yeah. You know, it's like what happened? you see people like fall off a roof and then like, ooh, that's got to hurt. Anyway, coming up next. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, yeah, that person's dead. Grass is soft. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to commercial. Yeah, whenever I see that kind of, whenever you see people getting hurt on those shows and they cut away and, and like Just for Laughs used to have that uh, where they show people getting hurt and they're like, whoa, and they yeah, do like, yeah. wacky sounds. But you're like, I think that guy broke his neck. Yeah. And they're like, whoa. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. no, no. He's his spine is is inside of his asshole now. Yeah. But God bless. If we can sell a show about people getting hurt, uh, to you know, if anybody's watching, any executives wants to buy it, um, please let I us bet know. You there's a lot of executives watching, watching this show. Yeah, oh, tons, yeah, yeah, tons. Yeah. Do you feel? Do you feel uh, a sense of like more freedom or relief now that the the show is done? <sighs> no. No, not no? really. You know, it was weird because I definitely um, so much of your life. It was so much of my life, and and I'm a bitch. You know, like I am. Uh, I'm. Uh, That's uh, the name of this episode, by the way. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I'm. A, I can be a real malcontent, and I can. Uh, I can get bored very easily, and and I mean, for me to have done one thing for so long, I would never have guessed. Like I liked the freelance aspect. Like when I got out of college and I worked in film production in Chicago, 
I immediately was like, oh, I like this freelance thing because it's always different places and different faces. And, right. You know, there's this constant change. Um, so it was kind of and I and I also, too, wanted to be an actor. I didn't necessarily want to be myself. So it was kind of a, you know, it, was, it wasn't like what I thought I was going to end up doing. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, obviously, it was fantastic, and it gave me a life and a career. Um, but I, there were definitely times when I would get itchy, and I would get antsy, and I would get uh, bored. I mean, like the yeah. first time, when I left the first time in 2000, I, that was just kind of like... I got to go. I was just kind of bored. I right. just felt like... I'm going to, I wasn't doing anything different. And I also too, I was younger. My kids weren't older. In fact, I didn't even have kids at that point that I, you know, I think my ex-wife was pregnant with our first right at that time. Um, but so I still had this kind of, you know, like, let's see what I can do outside of this thing. Um, and then, and, but then going back to work for him on the tonight show, I was happy to do that because I was, I had been developing and developing is just like <sighs> pearls before fucking swine. Yeah, it's, like, it's sad. J- it's just, it's, it's just annoying and it takes so long and, and you, you just end up hating every idea that you have because they mm-hmm. make you look at it for so long and re and, you know, configure it in different ways and until you just hate it and you're bored with it and you want to move on. And it's yeah. like, you know, and that was a good idea when I had it. Right. So I was really happy to go back to making TV that for that day. <laughs> like thinking of something in the morning and putting it on TV that night with very little interruption from anybody else. Anybody, yeah. yeah. Um, but I would, like I say, I would get bored. I would get antsy. I would get like, I want to, you know, I even, there was a point at one time where, and I didn't seek it out, but, um, there was a pilot that came to me and like, it was an ensemble cast and uh, like Eva Longoria was a star of this thing. And I said, sure. And I, you know, I went to Conan and I know he was upset about it, but I was like, Hey, I'm going to go do this because, uh, you know, if, if I can do this sitcom and they hire me, I'm going to need to go do this sitcom, but that's kind of more what I want to do anyway. And I also, too, will make a lot more money. Yeah. I'll make a lot more money. Right. Um, I mean, I was well paid, but it was, you know, not the same as what it would be if you were it's on different. A, any other show for 11 years. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but then the way that it ended was co- the way COVID hit. And then we kind of were at home. And then we moved into Largo. And at first he was in Largo by himself. Yeah. And then I kind of slowly came and then we were there for, I don't know, like almost a year or something. Just And there was like eight, nine people there yeah. making a show every day. And it was just so much fun. And and he and I got to spend a lot of in, uninterrupted, like just lazy, smooth, casual time together that was really nice. Um, so it was kind of the perfect way for it to go out. Cause, and also, too, it it changed the the framework of it. It wasn't like I th- if we just stayed in that studio and there'd been no pandemic and the show just kind of petered out, that would have been a bummer. Well, yeah, I've been sad. Yeah. yeah. So this was more sort of like the circumstances had changed. And I mean, and I don't know for, for a fact that if there had been no COVID that we wouldn't have ended, but it's probably, you know, it was kind of time, you know. I it mean, happened t- when it was supposed to happen. Yeah, and TBS is... You know, just TBS is kind of petering. Just everything is petering out. And nobody's watching, you know, the numbers that, like, The Tonight Show get gets. This, sh- this show probably gets the same. Uh, it's crazy yeah. how, like, the, it's just, wild. Uh, just the numbers that television in general gets is just, it, it's so small. And it's, I don't, nobody knows how to make money off it anymore. Right. And there's so many other things to watch. Um so I was I was sad to see it go, and I was, but I was also really proud of kind of the way that the way that we went out and kind of looking back on things, and and the amount of kind of nice things that people said about the show and about my contribution to it. It was really nice. I'm really, you know, there's a lot of things that I can do now that I didn't have a lot of time for. Like um, I, I I've directed some television commercials with a company in Chicago, actually, from all people that I worked with 
years when ago. When I worked on commercials and I've maintained, you know, friendships with some people oh, and great. and directed some. So, I mean, I, I have more time to do that if I get off my ass and do it. Right. Um, and I mean, and, you know, and I have more time to, to act, you know, if the fucking phone rings, but it's just, it's. All I ever hear is, oh, it's so dead right now. It's so dead right now. That's my favorite phrase when they say that to me, when the agents are like, yeah, we're out there fishing. I mean, there's not a lot of coming through on that thing. And you're like, really? Because I feel like, is The Rock doing nine movies this this week? (laughs) Yeah. Isn't Isn't there like a security guard role in there somewhere? There's got to be some bullshit thing I can snap into. And they're like, I don't (laughs) know. Yeah, you wouldn't want any of that stuff. Yeah, Uh, yeah. You're like, yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I fucking do. Yeah, yeah. Give me the thing where I walk up and go, you guys aren't allowed to be over here. And then I walk away. Right, right, exactly. There was, uh, you, Al, you know Al Madrigal, don't you know him? Uh, yeah. sure. Al used to say, when we did I'm Dying Up Here Together on Showtime, he used to say all the time, I'm trying to be fourth banana brown guy. And he would say that all the time. He'd go, give me fourth banana brown guy where I walk into a sitcom <laughs> and, I, and I'm eating something. And he goes, and I, and, <laughs> and I break the scene by going, we're out of hot water. And then I leave. And he's like, if I can be fourth banana yeah. brown guy on a sitcom, he always loved saying that. And then sure enough, he's had a great fucking career, which the irony is staggering because he was like, I just want to get on a show where I don't have to do shit. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and I was like, no, you don't. Yeah. But he, but, but he was always fishing for that. He's like, I would tell my agents, can you find me the, I come and I go, no one really knows that I'm there. I don't gain an, I don't gain a bunch of traction from it, but it doesn't hurt me. It's just a steady check. Yeah, he's like that's what I wanted for years, which is a lie because Al obviously was fucking you know be, his movie was with fucking Ben Affleck and shit. I was like, shut up, Al. Yeah, you know, yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah. You want the thing? Everybody wants. Everybody wants. Everybody it. wants part of the thing. Yeah, I, yeah, a manageable. As you get older, you realize you don't want the full thing. Well, the like full the thing full is thing what a sucks. nightmare. Oh, you know, because then you got to you know. Then you have to deal with all the, the, then you have to deal with like them uh, making you whatever that, like they create who you become in a public fashion, which mm-hmm. you're like, that's not who I am. Yeah. And they're like, you are to us. Yeah. Uh, the phrase, I don't even know who said it, but someone said to me, you are who they say you are, which means you are, Andy Richter is your own being, the way you feel about things, but who they say you are to them is you, regardless yeah. of what they find yeah. about you anyway. They're like, yeah, nah, but you're still X, Y, Z to us. Right, right. Which is unfortunate but it's part of the business it's part of the giving ourselves for entertainment yeah which is strange it's very odd there and there's you know the the part that you know about and the part that you think about before you do it like acting in movies and you know being in a movie and people knowing who you are and then getting more movies and or getting TV shows and getting to be funny. And even some of it, you know, like going on talk shows and stuff. Like it all seems fun and stuff. But there's so much extra shit oh, that, yeah. you, that you have to do and that you're expected to do. And that, you know, like if heaven forbid you are in something where it's up for awards. Like that when I first started when I first started having friends that kind of can't were coming close to like like Oscar contention. That's wild. The the fucking like parties and dinners and you have to campaign for it like you're running for office. Yeah. And if you don't, you're you're a traitor to the cause. Like if you're like, okay, yeah, I did a good job in that, but I don't really care. Say I don't care about, you know, getting an Oscar. So I don't want to go to 15 different dinners and, you know, kiss up to and they're like, you know, fuck whatever, you. Latvian journalists or whatever, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, you know, and it's like, well, we're all here. You know, it would really help the movie. It would really help the movie to right, do that. That pressure stuff. is yeah, daunting. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I want yeah. any of that. And I, and I have said, I'm nowhere near winning any kind of award, so I'm fine. But if it even were to come down that route, I don't think I would, I think I'd be like, I don't. It's, it would be real, you know, I mean. You got to kind of do some of it. Yeah. Like we run, the, the Conan show won a posthumous Writers Guild Award, which was really nice. We That's just, nice. The last Writers Guild, we won the Writers Guild Award, which we were not expecting at all. But the, and that's really nice because that's like it, it, you know like really from your peers and and the writing of that show was was such an important part of that show and a, and a big yeah. chunk of its identity since 
the fucking main guy is a comedy writer. That was like, you know, that's where he came from. Um, but like, but when you think, you know, like when you think about winning an Emmy, it's like, oh man, I had, I had one of the best fucking showbiz experiences. Uh, just, or like, you know, just like, just perfect, uh, showbiz experience when it comes to this. My aunt and uncle, uh, lived out here. My aunt has passed away since, but they were, they lived here. They lived in Long Beach and they were getting to, from being people, adults that could live on their own to people that needed help. Mm. And I had to help them with that transition Ugh. and got them into assisted living. And then the assisted living where they were became untenable. So we had to look at other places. So I, I have spent, I, I'm, I know a lot about the assisted living facilities in about a 50 mile radius okay. and having, and I've toured a number of them. <laughs> And there Anyone was you like in one. particular? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, Belmont Village, it's a chain and they're very nice. They're, they're very nice. nice. Shout yeah, out to yeah. Belmont Village. Yeah. There's they, the, uh, the Belmont owner is going, yes. Yeah. The, the, their pricing, uh, the, everything's a la carte, you mm. know, so that it can get pricey and, you, and it can, you sure. know, like, if you say, yeah, sure. I'd like to someone come in here and help me organize my pills. That's like, 12 well, grand. yeah, that'll be $1,200, right, right, you right, know, right, right. Um, for today. So I was touring this kind of shabby little one i won't say where but um it was like just a warehouse just like oh. a, a a a big you walk in and it's just this big open room fox news deafeningly loud <laughs> and then and then just like old people staring off into space Tucker just, carlson yelling just a warehouse are jews real <laughs> so everyone's just b b drooling <laughs> yeah and and the woman and the, you know, the people that sell it to you, they're like, you know, realtors. They're yeah. like, you know, let's show That's you. That's creepy. Here's a pamphlet. And so we're walking around and she's all chipper and, you know, all this. And then we we walk by a woman sitting in a hallway, staring absolutely into space. And we stop for a second and she points to her as if she's pointing to a potted plant and goes, three-time daytime Emmy winner. Oh my God! At like a completely like comatose three time human daytime being. Emmy winner, three and she time. and she's like that, and she turns just for uh, yeah. one noise, and she goes, "No, no, she just she didn't, didn't even register." She three time just, daytime Emmy three time winner. daytime Emmy Emmy winner, <laughs> like that pitch was, was gonna like, sell you. I well, just was like, I need to sit down. I need to sit down and stare for a while myself. After did that give you that. a little bit of uh, foresight? Is that what that feels like? It that, felt that... a little bit like, oh, nothing means anything. See that guy at that bus stop shitting himself? That's Andy Richter. <laughs> Do you remember Andy Richter? Andy! Yeah. yeah. What? I'm, I'm still shitting. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> but that is kind of the, that's kind of a microcosm of the business is like, you can't take yourself that serious because this thing, you're just going to be a drooling daytime three-time daytime Emmy winner in a thing anyway. Yeah, yeah. So might as well fuck it off and have fun. Yeah, yeah. That's why I think all that stuff is bullshit. Yeah. The fucking, you know, the whole like, <laughs> I don't know, the the this this self jerking off of each other, like, oh, we're yeah. so oh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut it out. Yes. This is fake. This is fake. It's for fun. Yeah. We're supposed to make people laugh and feel good right. and goof around. Right. But and it's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. It's we, a scam. We, we get paid to do this? It's a scam. That's ridiculous. I, have a, I, have a, I was doing a bit about that on stage for a while that I melded into something else about how I believe everyone either does a scam or bullshit. So you're either a scam artist or you're doing something that's actually bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And then occasionally someone will throw in something where they're like, you know, I help kids with disabilities. And I'm like, okay, we need you. Yeah. That's also bullshit, but we need you. <laughs> <laughs> we do need you. But everything is fucking right. is bullshit. I, I've taken it less and less serious as I've gotten older in it because I used to get so emotionally attached to it. And, you know, like when shows got canceled that I did, which every show I've ever done got canceled, either first season or second. And so yeah. I used to be like, fuck, man, what the fuck? What, ugh, what is you? Is this how it always goes? And at some point, I guess maybe I grew up enough to go. Yeah, whatever, man. Well, yeah. I, 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 you have, it's gone out of your control. Yeah. You know, you're well, alive. You're, you know, it's working. Yeah, yeah. Barely, but it's yeah, working. Right. So just to cap off with your three. So I know where you're from. Uh huh. I know kind of where you're going. I'm stealing your format, you know, but what have you learned? Do I know where I'm going? That's the thing is, uh, I don't know. I'm not quite sure where I'm going. I really am. I mean, I, but it, isn't that, it, that's probably nice. It's, it's fun. It's scary, but it is kind of fun. You yeah, know, I it's mean, open. yeah, I mean, I did, 
you know, the Conan show, I, I got, I, you know, I was married for 25 years and we split up and then the Conan show ended. And now I'm kind of like at a point where it's like, I, I don't know. But you're I, free. Kind, yeah, free-ish, you know, I mean, I don't no want to be... change making you go, you need to, you oh, have no, to. Oh, no, 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 but I mean, but I mean, I do, I'm free, but I, you know, I still have kids that I want to be here for, and I, you know, and yeah. I still have bills to pay, and, you know, You'd people have, You that... don't have to pay them. <laughs> I stopped paying all these fucking things years ago. Oh, yeah. And they call, oh, you yeah. have to pay Where it. are you? Yeah, good luck. Yeah, yeah. I'm not me. <laughs> I'm my roommate. <laughs> Roommates, one of my roommates, <laughs> hang up the phone. Did he say S? Is there many people living there? But then if you, you don't know where you're going is kind of good. That's, yeah. that's okay. It's okay. What have you learned? I'm stealing from you. Mm. I like it so much. Yeah, what have I learned? Um, honestly, well, I mean, there's all different ones. Because, like, I have different things that, like, I'm not a big slogan guy, but like I, there are things that I've like told my kids, that, like work for peace is one that I always work say. for peace, work for peace, which mm. means mostly in your personal life. Like, are you for war? Or are you for peace? Mm. Like with the people in your, in your life, are you, are you working towards a peaceful coexistence where you both appreciate it and love each other for who you are? Or are you trying to win something? Uh. Um, so that's, that's one I, Try to keep in mind. Uh, get better is another one. There's no like get perfect. There's just get better. Yeah, perfect's impossible. Yeah, just and that because I have seen people who achieved their dream and then they're like, whoa, fuck, you know, now I got to live the rest of my life. What do I do now? Yeah. And so it's if you make if you make your goal a process, it's much better. Um, but one that's you know, and I mean. It's easy for me to say because I'm a white man in a white man's world. I didn't assume, but, by the way. <laughs> but be nice. Yeah. Be nice. Just yeah. be nice. Don't be an asshole. Just if you got if you got shit, keep it in your bucket. Don't slosh your bucket on anybody else. All right. You know, like everybody's got their own thing. Keep it because and I because I see this so much in workplaces and and I like on sets where people it's like you, grown adults the need for people to tend to them yeah. at all times. It's just like, it, to me, it's just, and I, as I get older, it just gets more and more infuriating where it's like, you're not a baby. There are real babies in the world. You're yeah. not a baby. You're a grown up. Yeah. Why do you need so many people to be tending to you at all times? Call Why them. do you need to stop the day? Right. So that everyone listens to you for just one second when really the only point of what you're doing here, it isn't because you don't know what your motivation is or because, you know, someone's been stepping on your line. It's because you just want everyone to stop and you want it all to be about you for just a moment or two so you can go mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> delicious. Oh, that was all about me. OK, continue. You know, <laughs> uh, it makes me bananas. It, yeah, it drives me crazy. And it's just like. Oh, just, just, you know, it's so easy to be nice to people. Yeah. I had, you know, I, I the, just the stories that I hear about, like, I don't want it to, uh, you know, an actor, uh, like an, uh, a, a third AD told me, you know, who was in charge of the, the you, you know, like the home base, the, right. you know, where the trailers were, got the star of the movie out of his trailer, walked his dog, picked up his dog shit. Got him out of the trailer, sometimes with an umbrella, got him into a van, got him back into his trailer, using an umbrella, for six weeks, and he never said a word to her. Never said one, like, good morning, mm. how are you? Didn't bother to learn her name, didn't just, and I just, I'm just. Jason Bateman, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> You're a fucking uh, piece no, of no. shit. Bateman would have known her uh, birthday yeah. and, uh, you know, like what her mother did for a living. No, yeah. Bateman would. No, no, Bateman no. would have been No, I like, I like saying that. bad things about him because he's a golf buddy and um, I do like talking shit he on also, this show about him. He's also just one of the 
most fun people to make fun of. Yeah, he's awesome. He's just well because really... he's so he's handsome and he's good at everything. Right, right, right. You're a fucking loser. Fuck you, Bateman. You <laughs> like he'll ever Matt, see this. Matt Walsh is another one. Matt Walsh is just Walsh is making too... fun of Matt Walsh is just because he's the best. Oh, he's just the best. He's one of me, by the way. He's a and he is he's a scumbag he genetic is. freak. He is. He is. But what you what you what I took from that what truly was uh, it's a lot the 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 bucket thing I liked. Don't let your bucket slosh on other people. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, just fucking dump it out when you get home. Right. Hit your wife. Right. That's what you're saying. <laughs> or your husband. Yes. I'm not a sexist. No, no, no. Hit each other. Yeah, hit, hit the hit shit whoever. out of each other. You know. It's interesting that you say this, honestly, because we, we end the show the same way every time. I have you look into your camera. All right. And I usually say you say one word or one phrase to end the episode. And you've kind of done that organically with mm-hmm. a little phrasing. But look in your camera. And say one word or one phrase, it'll be cemented in history forever for the rest of time as Andy Richter's mm. last word or phrase. Because I did word for a while and people were like, I don't know, one word. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they gave a phrase. So whatever you say, whenever you're ready, you can do it. Okay. You go ahead. I like it greasy. <laughs> in here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.